Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Multiple law enforcement agencies are investigating an alleged case of child abuse out of Monoman, Minnesota. The Monoman County Sheriff's Department says they were called to the 2200 block of College Road on Monday and say a three-year-old child was later flown to Fargo in critical condition. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with family and friends today who say investigators have it all wrong. It was all an accident. That's what family and friends of the young victim told me multiple times today. None of them wanted to speak with me on camera, but say they're disgusted the young girl's parents are even being investigated. According to family members, as well as a GoFundMe for the three-year-old girl, the victim hit her head on a coffee table and soon became unconscious. The victim was taken to the Monoman emergency room where it was decided she needed to be flown to Fargo for her injuries. Family members say the three-year-old had emergency brain surgery to relieve the intense amount of swelling and remains in critical condition with heavy sedation. Family and friends say the child's mother would never lay a hand on her daughter and want people in the community to refrain from judgment until further information comes out from investigators. Emma Noman, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. At this time, there is no one in custody related to this incident. We reached out to the Monoman County Sheriff's Department for an update on this story, but they say there is nothing further at this time. Moorhead police are asking for the public's help with a homicide investigation involving Richard Steffen. The assault took place at 1615 20th Street South in Moorhead last Thursday. Police are trying to identify others who may have witnessed or been involved in the assault or have more information regarding the events that took place. If you know anything about this case, you can call the Moorhead Police Department at 218-299-5120. Callers can remain anonymous. West Fargo police have now released a description of a man they believe was involved in an armed robbery at Jimmy John's. Police got the call around 8 last night of the armed robbery. They say the suspect pointed a handgun at employees and demanded money and then took off. Canines were brought in to try and track the suspect, but it didn't work. The robber is described as a light-skinned black man, about 5 foot 6 inches tall. He was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt with the hood up and was also wearing a black face mask. We, he got into a white vehicle and headed west toward Rivers Bend, where he ditched the vehicle. If you have any information about the robbery or the suspects, call police at 433-5500. Grand Forks fire marshals are now ruling a garage fire that caused major damage and destroyed two vehicles an accident. Officials say it happened yesterday around 1130 in the morning in the 2400 block of 42nd Avenue South in Grand Forks. The fire is being classified as accidental. Authorities say it was caused by the failure of a cordless battery and charger next to flammable materials in the garage. The fire then spread, causing extensive damage. A little cool today, but can we talk about the wind? And also, let's find out if we have any rain chances in the near future. Here's Hutch with a look at your first alert forecast. Hey, Hutch. Hey, Andrea, some comfortably cool temperatures across the valley again today. It's been breezy from the north and from the west, and we see 70s from Fargo and Devil's Lake and points south and west. As we look into northwest Minnesota, low 60s for many of you. There's more clouds there and a few showers now moving across the Saskatchewan-Manitoba border. These are drifting to the south and east and will push through the Devil's Lake Basin this evening. Isolated in nature and hit and miss. Really, most of us will see nothing. As we take a look at your planning forecast for Fargo tonight, we'll spend much of the uh, post-sunset hours in the 60s, mostly clear to partly cloudy skies. In Grand Forks, you can see the blue skies there. Temperatures in the 60s for most of your evening. Again, the wind tapers off but not until after sunset. Now, we will start a little bit warmer weather as we head toward the close of our work week, but a few chances of showers and storms. I'll detail all of that in a moment. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Authorities in Dilworth say a missing teenager has now been found and she's safe. Dilworth police say 16-year-old Jalen McKenzie Cross has been located, and they want to thank the Fargo Police Department for their help in getting her home safely. State health officials are confirming 40 new cases of COVID-19, along with one additional death in North Dakota. The victim was a woman in her 80s from Cass County with previous health issues. There have been 73 deaths related to COVID-19 in the state. In total, there are 386 active cases in North Dakota, and 2,482 people are listed as recovered. 
In Minnesota, the state health department is reporting 19 more deaths linked to the virus in the state. This brings the death toll in the state to 1,236. Of those deaths, 984 happened in a long-term care facility. 31 of the deaths are considered probable, meaning a positive test result is not on file. 352 more people are diagnosed with the virus, bringing the active case count to 2,958. 24,675 people have recovered. Few uh, people looking to get tested will have two opportunities here in Fargo both tomorrow and Friday. The events will be at the Fargo Dome from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Similar testing events for COVID-19 are taking place statewide to determine the readiness of the state to continue reopening efforts. Appointments are not required, but it is strongly encouraged to complete the online screening questionnaire in advance. A link to the questionnaire can be found by clicking on this story on the VNL News app. The tests are free and insurance will not be processed. Those with a positive result will be notified by phone with in 72 hours. Every state in the country is reopening in some capacity, at the same time when many are experiencing an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases. As NBC's Wendy Wolfolk explains, health experts are warning everyone not to let their guard down. With more people out of their homes. This is a new thing, a new way of life for everyone. Inevitably, there will also be more cases of COVID-19. Reopen, reopen, reopen. Be careful, be careful, be careful. A delicate balance to strike for everyone to move forward. Recovery is going to be very complicated. Uh, we are trying to do the step-by-step -step approach depending on the context of the area. Black lives Another complication, the protests that started in Minneapolis amidst the ongoing global pandemic. Health officials urging all who participated to be tested. The test was really quick and now I'm on my way home to tell my wife that, you know, it's done. Across the country, 21 states have now seen an increase in cases. Arizona lifted its stay at home orders on May 15th. The state has seen a 40% increase in the cases since last week and eight out of every 10 hospital beds in use. Another example why healthcare experts warn now is not the time to relax social distancing protocols. The bottom line is all the scientific evidence we have right now is pretty clear uh, that people without symptoms who are infected can and do spread the disease. So that's why you got to wear a mask and you got to keep that physical distance. Advice for the entire nation managing the reopening and resurgence in a COVID-19 world. Wendy Wolfolk, NBC News. The World Health Organization says as more places reopen and more people get active outdoors, the threat for a potential second wave of coronavirus is more realistic. Authorities in Polk County want to alert the community to an unemployment scam that's hitting the area. Officials say they have received several complaints in the last two days about citizens receiving letters in the mail about their application for unemployment. In each of these reports, no one had applied for unemployment. Authorities say do not provide any information. If you receive the same or similar letters, go ahead and contact your local law enforcement. NASCAR's Bubba Wallace and his number 43 car will have a paint scheme with a social message when he races tonight at Virginia's Martinsville Speedway. Uh, Wallace, the only African-American driver in the Cup Series, will race with a Black Lives Matter paint scheme on his petty motorsports car. The words hashtag Black Lives Matter appear on the car's rear quarter panels on the hood. Uh, or rather, on the hood will be a white and black hand embracing with the message compassion, love and understanding. The 26-year-old Wallace explained why he thinks this is the right time for this car and this message. And it's true, Black Lives do matter. Uh, it's not it's not that we're saying no other lives matter. It's we were trying to say that black lives matter, too. If we put T.O.O. on the end, I think a lot more people would understand it. We want to be treated equally and, and not judged off our skin color and the actions that we get to ensue are based off of our skin color. NASCAR has officially banned the display of Confederate flags from all events and properties. Still ahead tonight, Congress discusses police reform legislation in the wake of George Floyd's death at the hands of Minneapolis police. And most of us will stay dry this evening, but we could see a few hit and miss thunder showers. I'll have the latest on the progress and timing and track of those coming up right after this.